Hey everyone, this is Jove with Jove's Gaming Lounge, and today we're gonna set up Dolphin Emulator on Linux. We're gonna get right to it. We are at the dolphinemu.org website. This is where normally you would get the Dolphin Emulator, but I'm gonna show you something here. When it comes to Linux, you just don't see the builds where you need to get them. As you can see here, they have Windows, Windows ARM, Mac OS, and Android. And to find the latest Linux version, you'll see it as a stable 4.0 from nine years ago. So this will not do. What they normally offer for Linux is that if you're on an Ubuntu based system, you can add their PPA or get it directly from your system repository, which isn't typically the most up to date version of the emulator. So what we'll do today is we're going to get the flat pack version of Dolphin emulator and looking at the GitHub for the contributors here, the update frequency is on the beta release. So as soon as the beta release updates, it will update through Flatpak as well. And this is the one we actually really need to use because the beta updates are the ones with the latest features. We're not going to get the developmental version because that's basically the, their nightly. The betas are the most up to date versions of a playable Dolphin emulator we can use. So we're going to install it through Flathub. We can either hit this install button here or you can bring up the discover application and you can search for it here type dolphin emu and here we have it under flat pack i'm going to go ahead and install it now once it's installed we can go ahead and launch the program this step here is totally up to you i prefer not to and here we have the dolphin emulator the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do is add my games to dolphin so You'll find it under config under paths and here you want to add your folder where your games are located. I'm just going to go ahead and add mine. So here I went ahead and added my GameCube games. I'm going to close this and here we have F0 Mario Kart Soul Calibur 2. I'm going to just double click on Soul Calibur 2. And as you can see, it's launching the game. This is already working, but we need to do a few things. We'll go ahead and stop the emulator. We need to set up our controller first. So for GameCube controllers, we'll go here and configure. I have an Xbox One wireless controller connected. Okay, and so if you need a guide on where the buttons correspond to, to the Xbox controller or whatever controller you have plugged in. There are images like this all over the internet. This is just a quick Google search away. And I found this right here. So basically this layout here, I would assume that this would be the A button on the Xbox controller. While we could use this as the X button on the Xbox controller. This would be the Y button and this would be the B button. So with that, we'll go ahead and bring up Dolphin again. For the triggers, I like to press L as a trigger and L as an analog. Now you have a little bit of fine tuning when it comes to pressing the L buttons. Same thing with R. You can also add a dead zone if this is something that you need to do. As for the rumble feature, you could come in here click on this and we have four different options best way to test it is you'll double click on one hit test your controller should vibrate at this point if you don't like this kind of uh, vibration you can hit clear select the other one test it and this is basically preference you can choose to have these on or you can just choose to not have them on totally up to you one thing I recommend you do, name it, save it. Now your profile is always going to be here when you come back and then you can change it or add different controllers, that give them different profiles. For instance, if a PlayStation controller, I'll just name it PS and then follow the same steps I did. We'll go into graphics. I'm going to switch from OpenGL into Vulcan. Now this does depend on your hardware. 
I believe that this GTX 770 will work great with OpenGL and is so-so with Vulkan since this was not a main feature of this graphics card. For all AMD cards, Vulkan is the way to go. OpenGL does work a lot better on Linux than it does on Windows, so preference up to you. Another thing I like to add is hybrid Uber shaders because as it says so here, in the best case, it eliminates shader compilation stutter while having minimal performance impact. So this is actually good to have, doesn't hurt. You can also compile shaders before starting, totally up to you. As for enhancements, this is totally dependent on your hardware. Um, I, I like to go up to 3X just to keep it simple for uh, 1080p. Anti-aliasing, this is actually very dependent on games. One thing I will stress here is that there is a wiki. If you right click on the game, you see that wiki pops up. If you click that, it'll take you to the Dolphin Wiki, which actually has a lot of really good information. Now on the Dolphin Wiki, you'll actually see how to solve certain problems and how to get 16.9, for instance, for certain games that do support it. If you notice here, store EFB copies to texture only needs to be off needed for lens flare effect. So this is actually very important. I'm going to minimize this here. We're going to go into F0 GX. And check the wiki for that. Same thing here. Some graphics settings. As of right now, there's no way to save these custom settings per game. So once you change something, you need to be mindful that you changed it and either change it back when you're done playing the game and then always check the compatibilities here on the Dolphin Wiki so that you can get the best experience for the game. And so here is Soul Calibur running on Dolphin Emulator. We have it at the standard 4.3, but in this particular game, it does support 16 by nine. You can go into the options here under display settings, and then we can go to screen ratio. Here we can put 16 by nine, and then we can exit. From here, we can access the settings on Dolphin, go to graphics, under general settings, we go to the aspect ratio and you can force 16 by nine. As you can see, it stretched it to the back end. You can do stretch to window as well, because this will look better when we full screen Dolphin emulator. But we'll close this. I'm in here. Alt enter will full screen Dolphin emulator. So that was Dolphin running GameCube games. Now, what about Wii games, you may ask? Well, let me go ahead and add my Wii games. Okay, and so for the Wii controller, we can just pull up another layout directly from Google or whatever search engine you may like. And here we have the layout of the Nunchuck with the Wii controller. Now we can try to mimic this on the Xbox controller, but mileage varies and it also depends on a per game basis. For instance, you may notice that there are websites out there very helpful where you can find a list of Wii games with a traditional controller scheme. So here, it'll go straight down the line, which ones can use the classic controller configuration and or the GameCube controller configuration. This is actually very helpful when setting up your controller for playing Wii games. Depending on which game you wanna play, you'll have to set up your controller accordingly. And one of the games on my list is Tatsunoku vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. This will play right away with our GameCube controller setting 
This is using the GameCube controller profile we had set up earlier. Super Smash Brothers Brawl is another game that does not need a Wii controller setup. You can just play this with the GameCube configuration as well. Okay, so let's say you do need to use a Wii controller for a game. What we're going to do is we're going to set it up using emulate the Wii Bluetooth adapter. We're going to go to configure. We want to make sure that the nunchuck extension is attached. And we're going to go ahead and click through the buttons here. So it appears A will be up front, B will be behind. So we'll use this here as A on the Xbox controller. Make sure you select your controller first. I use B as B. One and two, I'm going to change to X and Y. Plus and minus, I'm going to choose what would be the start button on the controller on the traditional scheme. Select on the traditional scheme. Home, I will put the Xbox button. We'll D pad up. I'm going to use the analog 13 button here for this one. We can toggle upright. I'm going to use the opposite one on the right side. Under motion simulation, what you could do, we can set up the right analog to do our motions. So typically a game like Mario Galaxy you're going to need to use the pointer to collect the uh, items on screen. So we can set up the right analog to do this while we have the left analog to move around. So here we can just go to point up and we'll have up on the right analog. Down, left, right. Under the extension, this is where you set up the nunchuck. So We'll use the left analog for this. And then C and Z, you could actually use uh, L and L trigger. And this leaves your right and right trigger open for other things. And so if you need to set up a shake, you can use one of the R triggers or R button for it. For now, I'm going to keep it as this. Maybe a little XB and save. For the games I've played so far, these are the settings that have worked out for me best. There are other guides out there that will show you uh, better configurations for controllers, but this is just what I've been able to come up with with just the games that I've been playing. Some of the games were require more movement, and that's just something that's just out of the controller's reach. Just going to make do with what we have at the moment. This is a quick setup on Dolphin emulator and GameCube We're playing Wii games on Linux. And this is also compatible with the Steam Deck as well. If you guys found this helpful, give the video a like. This way YouTube can recommend it to others. Subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.